So you're me, and you're in CAD class, and you've been tasked with making something stupid and boring, like a flange. The SolidWorks tutorial book walks you through every click, but since SolidWorks is one of the easiest programs out there to learn, and since by now you could make a flange in your sleep, you decide to find something better to do with your time. So since you're me, you start making twisty puzzles. If you don't know what twisty puzzles are, take a look at some of these to get an idea. Let's make a 3x3. Three three. Draw a rectangle on the top plane and dimension it to make a square. Do a mid-plane extrusion and make an equation that links it to the sides of the square. I like to make my puzzles parametric and center them on the origin to make things easier to adjust in the future. Now make a sketch for your cutting surface on the front plane. Draw your axis of rotation, then make three quick lines. You may wonder why these simple lines make a 3x3, three three, but if you take apart a Rubik's Cube, you can see that these segments correspond to the cross-section of the mechanism. Back in SolidWorks, exit the sketch and make a revolved surface. Now we have one cut. We need six. Time for a circular pattern. Make some axes and pattern the surface around. The most important tool for making twisty puzzles in SolidWorks is the split feature, which cuts a solid part into multiple bodies along the surfaces you choose. So insert a split feature, choose all of the cutting surfaces you made, and then hit cut part. Then select all of the parts and hit OK. Voila! Instant 3x3, mechanism and all. Of course, the puzzle won't work so well if you leave it like this. It needs to be adjusted for engineering fit, and it needs fillets and shells. But you know what? Cubes are boring. Let's do something with a dodecahedron. For that, we need a dodecahedron. You could just download one from somewhere like 3D Content Central, but then you wouldn't have control over sizing or orientation. There are lots of good tutorials out there that teach you how to make it yourself, so go try it out. Now that we have a dodecahedron, let's start cutting it into pieces. Start a sketch on the right plane. Make lots of construction lines and circles to base the sketch on, then start drawing your cutting surface. The Rubik's Cube used cylindrical cuts, but those are messy and take a lot of cleanup, so let's use spherical cuts instead. Start with just one layer of mechanism. Make the cut go into the puzzle and zigzag a few times to make the grips. It takes some practice to get the cut sketch right, so be patient. Once you're happy, exit the sketch and rotate the surface. Make some axes, pattern the surface, and do the split. But not the splits, because you've been sitting at a computer for a while, so you're probably stiff. Look, you made a Megaminx. But again, this is kind of boring. So you decide to make the cuts deeper. Now it gets interesting. Depending on how deep you make the cut, different types of pieces get cut off and those pieces need a mechanism to hold them in. So you decide you'll make a Master Pentultimate, which has a three-tiered mechanism made up of other puzzles. Starting from the Megaminx, add a few more construction circles and zigzags to your sketch, and you'll end up with a Pyraminx crystal. Keep adding layers to the mechanism, and you'll get a Starminx. And then add a few final segments to turn it into a Master Pentultimate. At this point, each rebuild is taking several minutes, and your poor computer is panting trying to keep up with your demands. I recommend you take a break and let it cool down. Go do some homework or something. Or just find another computer. Now that you have your cutting surface all planned out, you can make adjustments to fine-tune the dimensions of the pieces. You discover that there are ideal angles where you can put some of the cuts. For example, the Pyraminx crystal has some floating parts that you'd like to get rid of. What if you make one of the segments of the Pyraminx crystal cut perpendicular to the face I have highlighted here? Now the floating parts only have one layer, so you can get rid of them. Sweet. If you mess around with the Starminx layer, you can make the triangular pieces disappear by moving one way, or make them bigger by moving the other way. Keep adjusting until you're satisfied with the dimensions. Once more, you decide that this is boring. It's been done before. So you use Kepler's transformation to make it into a cube. Much better. Now it's time for cleanup. Do a body delete to get rid of all of the repeated parts, make adjustments for engineering fit using the move face feature, then add fillets, and shell the pieces out to 0.7 or 0.8 millimeters. After hours of hard work, you end up with quite a puzzle. Let's get it made. Make a part file for each body, save them as STLs, and upload them to Shapeways. Order the parts, and wait for a while. When the parts arrive, make sure all of them are there. If any are missing, it's good to check now before you dye the puzzle, so that all the pieces are the same shade of black. Now boil the parts and pour in the dye. Be sure to wear gloves, because this stuff stains everything. Rinse the parts off and let the pieces dry thoroughly. Then assemble the puzzle. While you put it together, you can now clearly see how the cutting surfaces define the shapes of the parts. For a while, I cut my stickers by hand, but since this puzzle needs 174 stickers, I used my university's laser cutter to do the job. Make sure that your laser cutter has good ventilation, as the burning sticker material emits some nasty fumes. Stickering usually takes a long time, especially when the stickers are small and the adhesive isn't very good. The material from Shapeways is a powder-based nylon that has been melted together in the right places. This gives it a grainy surface that makes it hard to get stickers to stick. You can see here that I'm putting a dab of superglue under each sticker to make sure that it stays. 
A few hours later, you've got an awesome twisty puzzle. I started designing puzzles during my CAD class freshman year, but this hobby has really helped me learn great mechanical design skills, like how to design a product for a particular manufacturing process, in this case 3D printing. Each new puzzle takes upwards of four or five hours to design, an hour to die, and several hours to sticker. It's a lot of work, but at the same time, I've had a lot of fun with it. My name is Aton, and this has been a Twisty Puzzle video tutorial. Thank you for watching.